Now then, this is a bit of an update and it might take me a couple of days to complete it but uh, several viewers have said uh, in view of the current lockdown etc etc to uh, see if I could do a few more updates just to keep them informed and keep the enthusiasm going. Um, one of the things I'd like to say is it's beholden upon all of us to look after our natural environment and of course one of the ways everyone can do that is to take on a low impact view to your everyday life and I use those words very specifically because it depends where you live but as I've said in one of my recent books that isn't yet published, um, at that point I was talking about off-grid. Off-grid is in your head and low impact is in your head. It's a way of thinking. So you can be living in town and you can still be low impact. Basically what I'm saying is, you know, you can't use the excuse of, oh, I live in an apartment, so therefore I have to do it this way. You can think your way through things. And as an example, choosing your energy supplier. You know, there has been a proliferation of um, companies who claim to have 100% renewable electricity. Well, it's not always the case. And there's been several major pioneers in this industry um, that have been about for 20 years and they've got a real philosophy of we care about this we're not just um, here for our shareholders so it's you know it's in your head you've got to really think about what you're doing rather than accepting the norm that's enough of that rant for the moment so the update today is basically we've got some um, sowing of some more seeds, dealing with compost um, and we'll see what happens. So let's get on with it. So this is the first lot of carrots in tubes. As you can see they're getting to be a reasonable size. Um, I brought them out of the conservatory and into the glass house I suppose they ought to do something about this glass house at some point. I did do a video about putting the guttering on it. There's a whole history about this glass house. Perhaps I'll do it at the end of this video. So um, anyway, at some point these will need to be thinned because otherwise they will um, the roots will all twist round each other. But I don't think I'll do it yet. Anyway, bring them out into the glass house because they can start acclimatising to a slightly lower temperature. It's called hardening off. Yeah, so that's that. And then I've got some more tubes there that uh, I thought I'd sew up. And as you know, we are now very early April. So we shall uh, get them sewn and put them in the conservatory for them to start germinating. So I'll just zoom out. The secret here is not to sow too many. So just very tempting to put loads in but you don't want to do that because you want to you want to make the seed last over several years Of course, you know, seed over time loses its viability, i.e. 
the powers to germinate but not instantly there we go and then I'll just uh, dust those over with some more compost You don't want a huge amount over the top. Half an inch maximum. Pat it down. Don't consolidate it too hard. And then water those. And that's the next lot. I mean effectively we want what we've got. 3, 12, 12 carrots there at the end of the season but you know it's self-reliance you have this stuff in the in the veg plot or in a little raised bed or even in huge tubs and you just can go to it and pick it when you need it's just that feeling of you know I am looking after myself it's a start. Right, what else have we got here? I wanted to do some more leeks, but I've also got some homegrown winter lettuce seeds. So let's sow those. So there we go. Just level that out a bit. Now then, let's just flip this round so I can see what's going on. So you've seen in the previous video some of the what we call winter lettuce uh, plants and where are we? That is a combination of seed and bits of fluff and all sorts of stuff. So you get these huge um, fluffy seed heads and just save them and they'll, they'll germinate. So we're just I'm just blowing there just to get rid of a bit of the fluff but you don't want to lose the seeds so just poke some in there again not too many and that'll do and if you keep these seeds in a sealed tin or container and uh, in somewhere cool and dry you know, they st they'll stay viable for a number of years and then you've got them in stock you don't need to go tearing off to garden center or anything like that to buy seeds every year hence um, you're reducing consumerism, you're increasing your self-reliance and uh, you're reducing the use of transport. It applies to basic principles. So we need to put a label on that or else we're just no chance. I won't remember. And as you can see we're, use, we're reusing labels you can't oh yes yes you can there we go wint lettuce there we go and that needs watering Now then, we've got some leeks here. These are called Autumn Mammoth. Good Lord, it's quite a modern packet of seeds. I 
I must have got those in the winter at an opportune moment. I'm going to do a video on stress um, and time. Yeah, at some point in the next few weeks. And what I've found over the years, if you're gonna go out, most of the time going out to work, um, you always get tempted, or I do, to fit in other things around it. So whilst I'm there, I can do this and this and this and this. And you've got to be very careful not to add in too many things because then it builds your stress levels up. Now, I'm gonna go on about that later on. That's a military plane. I can hear in the background. We've got a huge base about 20 miles away. Ah, spilt view. And there's one there. Right, that'll do. See, we've just taken a few moments just to move the projects along a bit. Now in this packet it says seeds half an inch deep. There we go. And we need to label it again. So this is the uh, the remnants of the muck hill. There's still plenty here, and of course it's rotted down over the last oh 25 years. So it's beautiful stuff now, and I'm just about to uh, sift some more for seed compost, etc. Yeah, because why not? You don't want to be going buying it if you can help it. I mean, all right, you've got weed seeds in here. So there's two ways to deal with that. One, you could sterilize it, and the Victorians used to do that with heat. I can't remember whether they used to steam it or bake it or something like that. They used to have, the big estates used to have big um, soil sterilizers for all the work in their glass houses. But I just put up with it and weed them out. Yeah, so let's just um, crack on and do a bit of this. And this, I believe, was my dad's. This shovel, I put a new handle on this when we were doing the house in 83-84 and uh, the wooden handle eventually snapped and I put a steel handle on it and just used my uh, um, inverter art welder on low setting just to make up this handle and it's great it's my favorite um, shovel if that sounds doesn't sound a bit too weird Don't put too much in there at once. And keep your back straight. Hopefully you heard that. Keep your back straight. There's no point doing this. If you waste some of it, well, it's better than wasting your back. That's why I like a slightly long, longer handle on a shovel. You get the idea and of course this lot you throw it in the pile there and over time that will break down the 
Now then, before we go any further, let's have a look at you. Wheelbarrows. How many wheelbarrows do you need? Depends what you're doing and uh, depends upon the size of your property. I've always collected wheelbarrows, mainly out of skips. Some um, poor um, inefficient people tend to buy a wheelbarrow and when the tyre goes flat they throw it away. So we happen to have about eight or nine of them. And I did a video about fixing wheelbarrow tyres, uh, which is easy enough and let me think, up there, I shall put the link to it. Again, if you buy the right glue, little pot of glue, and the right patches, which are cheap enough. Uh, in fact, last time I think I bought 50 two inch patches and it was cheaper than actually driving into town and back. And that'll see me out probably. So, you know, you fix the tire and it's just like, yeah, one more bit of self-reliance. This is gonna be a bit noisy. So uh, perhaps I'll just turn the volume down. So I'm just as an intermediate sharpening I'm just sharpening the tops but later on I'll have to uh, wipe a file over the front as well but I can feel that that is considerably sharper and I've just got this piece of wood jammed in there just to stop the blade vibrating And because I'm cross cutting, then the tooth that's facing that way, I have it handle the file handle down, and the tooth that's facing this way, I have the file handle up, so that it creates a eventually it creates a point on the outside. The outside being the outside of where the tooth is bent to. And of course. The reason for changing the angle is because I'm filing this circular saw blade from one side. Normally this tooth that's facing this way as part of the set I'd file from that side but I can't stand over there because the bench is there otherwise I have to take the blade off and this is just a quick interim sharpen. So that's one barrel load done. I'll do another three today. I just wanted to point out that you see those notches here. Now this is a piece of ash branch and the bark on small diameter ash doesn't split and it tends to hold the water in. The same with um, birch and cherry and so I put those notches in there just to uh, finish off the drying process and it allows the moisture out and the next thing obviously is that this whole channel started with sharpening the and reprofiling the teeth on this very blade so there's um, uh, yeah right back in the mists of time there's a couple of videos on sorting this uh, circular saw out and I will put the links to the videos up here you'll find that entertaining and I think it includes phrases like several sessions of serious saw doctoring which you don't want to say quickly so this is another wheelbarrow that I picked up a while ago and because you see the, the paint just flakes off 
so the water gets underneath the paint and uh, starts to rust it away. So if you're going to do something, use one like this, get that off and slap some other paint on. Doesn't matter what colour it is or just any old tins of um, uh, part used tins of uh, gloss paint just mix them all together you end up with some sort of grey horrible mess but it stops the rust keeps the wet out and of course it's got a flat tire now one of the problems is the bolts that these cheap and nasty wheelbarrows use means you can't get them undone very easily so the first thing to do is to soak them in something and I like diesel it tends to penetrate quite well um, so we just do that to start with obviously you can use other proprietary um, releasing or penetrating agents this is uh, I've actually washed this brush in this as well. Now it's really tricky because I think we need to zoom in here. There we go. See that bolts that way round, which is fine. But on the other side, if I can find it, there it is. It's just a dome head. Where's it gone? There it is. It's just a dome head. So it's absolutely deliberately designed so that it makes it difficult to get these out. So worst case scenario, you have to cut those off. Uh, you might be able to grab them with a pair of um, what we call mole grips and the Americans call vice grips. So let's give that a go and see what happens. Okay. Let's see if we can just grip hold of that while well, we can't. Ah, luckily. Now you could soak these for overnight 24 hours a week so that is just a very bad design it's a coach bolt and it's got a very slight square on there but that's a round hole so it's it's appalling so there you go and this whole assembly is not very good because this this axle is just squashed so it's the cheapest wheelbarrow um, you can get and well I wouldn't put a lot of weight in it If this was worse, I would end up keeping the bucket itself and keeping it under cover and keeping the wheel and scrapping the rest. But let's see what we can do. Let's see how it's designed. And look, you can see water. easing out of things. Now this one doesn't want to. Right, I'm going to do something that's not a good idea, but because I can't grip hold of the head, I'm going to grip hold of the bolt. But I'm going to leave two or three threads so that there 
I can wind this off a bit. Ah, that's strange. You can see the wheel just drop out. And this is Right, well that was a lot easier than I thought. Just when you want to demonstrate how difficult things are, it turns out to be not too bad. There you go, that's the cussedness of life. And just over here, a bit difficult to see in this sun, there's all that water coming out of where that frame was bolted together, just guaranteed to rot away. It looks like it's one of these wheelbarrows that come in a box and you bolt it together not designed to last very long. So that's the axle and it's fixed in the wheel and that's just a bit of squashed tube. So that is the bearing, one either side. And of course no lube in it whatsoever. Ah, so the axle actually so we could modify this if we wanted to anyway that should come out I don't want to dither about whilst you're just watching but um, let's get the tube out and see what see what uh, transpires so I've just got this little tool with a notch in the end and that goes into the valve stem let's just try and locate the there it goes that was difficult, that was unnecessarily difficult. Again, people would just give up at that point. Okay. So then we've got to get the tire levers out. Okay, so we can't lever it opposite. Um, what we need to do is need to push that end down so it's in the well. That is in the well here of the, the wheel. And once it's there, we can quickly and easily have the tyre off. You've got to be careful so as not to pinch the tube. Yeah, so use the proper tire levers if you can. Don't use screwdrivers. So, hopefully you can see this. Now, did I get that with the uh, um, tire levers? Because it's on the side wall. Or is there something in this side wall? I 
I suspect I got it with the tire lever because normally you wouldn't get a puncture in a side wall like that. Never mind. Um, that's enough of this. I'm going to put this back together. I'm not very enamoured of this wheelbarrow, the way it's put together. But the if I was putting it back together, I would use, instead of those uh, domed headed bolts, I would make sure you would use hex bolts, hex headed bolts, with a washer underneath and I would grease everything up well. I'd also grease the wheel spindles etc etc just so that it didn't induce a load of extra wear and so that I'm just trying to work out where I'm going yeah that when you need to you can get them apart again. Those um, coach bolts they're just a confounded nuisance and they're designed to put people off repairing stuff. It's appalling. So just a bit more of an update. This is an electrical connection um, over to one of the buildings and it's been all right for quite a while. There's nothing wrong with it, but it's just in the wrong place now. And it had to be there because we we're using several lengths of um, second-hand heavy-duty armoured cable. So what I propose to do, I've started digging down, as you can see, around it. And I'm going to take the box out, disconnect the connections, obviously, um, take the pole out, lay a paving slab in the bottom, do some brickwork, introduce the cables in there, do the uh, solder connections with the pitch around it or the tar, melted tar around it all and then put a paving slab over the top at ground level. So that should be fine. Don't need to go too deep um, and it will be easy accessible and the blue there is just um, earthing the, um, the armoured part of the cable. So it's just uh, an extra earth, that's all. So it's quite a long length of heavy duty cable that's buried underneath this track. There's a bit of a track here. So there you go. So that's the end of this video. Hopefully you'll find it entertaining and informative in some small way. And I will catch up with you very soon. Cheers for now.